year inside brunch on a Sunday morning. We are uh, celebrating and mourning with the family, with the Manning family this morning. Mourning because the nation has lost a great contributor who spent uh, over 45 years uh, serving this nation, twice as prime minister. In addition to we are celebrating because I, I, I think we, we have to take the time to recognize what folks have done as against just spending the time and in, 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 in mourning. You, you take that mourning, which is understandable, and you couple it with their contribution and, 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 and pray for the spirit. That's my general view. All right, let's go to the phone right now. University lecturer, uh, political analyst is Dr. Winford James. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello and good morning. Uh, Dr. James? Uh, good morning. Hey, sir. very good morning to you, sir. How are you? I am strong and good. How are you doing? I am as strong and as good as we can expect. Uh, we all just rocked back by the news yesterday morning and the and the passing of a great contributor to Trinidad and Tobago and to the Caribbean at large, uh, which is the passing of the former uh, Prime Minister Patrick Manning. I spent some time um, um, prior to getting on to you speaking to uh, Senator um, Conrad Enel about the contribution of, of, of Mr. Manning. Uh, you would have seen that contribution in some areas from the same perspective and other times as a political analyst you may have looked at it differently i want to speak of patrick manning the man as you understood him and patrick manning the prime minister okay so which, which i i would i would want to go as the under prime minister first let's just go uh, Pr patrick manning the prime minister so he was prime minister on two different occasions right two different That's periods right. and uh, he came up with a number of innovations uh, which are well reported in the press, I think. So let me see if I can go through some of them as, as they come to mind. Uh, Professor, just before you do that, may I ask of you, are, are you on speakerphone by chance? I am. Is it possible you can pick up the receiver? I am getting a... I'll turn it off. Ah, that I thank you so very much. Please continue, sir. Yes. Um, I was about to say that um, uh, as Prime Minister, he also came up with a number of innovations some of which I can call to mind right now. I think one of the most important innovations was his expansion of the economy from a focus on oil or petroleum to natural gas, which, of course, he exported in the form of liquefied natural gas. And he made Trinidad to be one of the biggest producers of um, natural gas. And he was to observe after the introduction of that expansion, he was to observe that Trinidad and, and, and Tobago's economy depended heavily uh, for its wealth from natural gas. I don't hear many people referring to that, but I think that is part of the equation. From an economic standpoint, he made the country prosper by diversifying from oil to natural gas. That's mm -hmm. one. Two, I think he expanded tertiary education in a way that had not been done before, right? Yes, he elaborated. We had mm -hmm. Williams and we had Chambers and we had Robinson, right? Um, but he, he, it was, I think, who was more instrumental than the others in expanding tertiary access. Now, but what's the importance of that? It is this, you know. He wanted the country to become not only more competitive in the Caribbean, but competitive in the world. He wanted to move the country from uh, uh, the status of developing country to developed country. And that move to expand tertiary access was part of uh, the wider 2020 vision, as you might recall. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a second very, very important part of what Patrick Manning did. Governance, Third, I'm sorry, please, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thirdly, um, he got involved in a, a program of massive capital expenditure and uh, the formation of UDCOT, which was outside of cabinet, <laughs> cabinet's purview, so to speak, and outside of the public service, the formation of UDCOT was in fact to uh, accelerate to get that um, program of capital expenditure uh, accelerated, and so we we got we got NAPA and SAPA and B 
buildings of that kind. Um, we also, he, he did um, try to solve, uh, maybe this is number four, um, some of the internal traffic problems in Trinidad and Tobago by coming up with the, what do you call that thing, this, this ferry from, the fast ferry from uh, San Fernando to mm. Port of Spain. Water ferry, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fifthly, well, uh, probably I'm running out of things. But I'm trying to hit the more important things. Fifthly, I think he was instrumental in setting up the Tobago Council of the PNM, and, or let's put it more simply, the Tobago PNM. I think it was on his watch that we had the Tobago a PNM with its own political leader, of course, uh, subject to the overall authority of the PNM in Trinidad and Tobago, and of course the political leader overall of the party. And of course he, while there's very little you can say about what he did for agriculture, he did try to help the vulnerable um, by uh, expanding CPEP and URP and so on. And also he tried to take care of the, the many uh, undereducated graduates of the secondary school system by coming up with training programs to equip those people with skills, employable skills. Now, I'm not evaluating now what the effects of this have been, but I do know that uh, he made training programs available to these undereducated teenagers mm -hmm. uh, graduating with hardly any employable skills, right? And hardly any academic skills either. So that, that is there as well. Uh, that, then again, you also had um, the, the, the floating of the dollar. He floated the dollar to Trinidad and Tobago's advantage. Now, some people probably would have called for uh, a, a greater freeing up of the, uh, the, the dollar, not letting it float in accordance with government policy, but floating in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. It hasn't happened. In fact, in, in, in the latest budget we have had, you know that um, the cabinet, in fact, has a managed ceiling. If the dollar is even floating, but there's a ceiling that has been placed. Right? So that the, but the idea of floating it, or the fact of floating, I think started with Mr. Manning, right? Yes, a managed flow. That float is what we're speaking now, about. Now, of course, mm -hmm. one can go on, but I have given you about seven, eight yes. contributions. Yes, uh, <laughs> in case, let me just remind our listeners, in case you just uh, tuned into brunch, it is at 107.7, uh, University lecturer and political analyst, Dr. Winford James, is my guest. We are looking at the contribution of uh, former Prime Minister Patrick Manning. Uh, always when you look at it, the g governance is exemplified by those who are able to convincingly articulate their vision so that the populace follow them. And from those who, who passed through those years, uh, say that he made very clear, easy, and simple in the first part um, his vision to move the country forward and was able to galvanize the nation along with him. So that speaks of a, of a particular understanding of, of, of the citizenry. Not only that, eh? um, it's not that all these ideas came from him. One never Indeed. knows. Mm -hmm. But then if one were to go back to his two tenures, one would find that he surrounded himself uh, with people of talent. There were quite a few able people, skilled people in his cabinet and among his advisors. Now, obviously, one has to review that for uh, greater intimacy with the details. But if you go back, you will find that um, he, he was surrounded by top-class advisors, and in his cabinet were people of great knowledge, of academic um, skills, but also uh, people uh, with uh, postgraduate um, expertise in various fields. So that, that also helped. And, of course, as you alluded, um, something you alluded to, he, he was quite articulate, wasn't he? He knew how to speak to the public, and he had particular... Uh, phrases that he used which um, held people's attention hmm. and endeared him
to many. And apparently he he used to help people at random, um, not... Of course, there was some purposeful ra- uh, helping of people as well, but I want to focus on the random aspect of his assistance to people, mm-hmm. which, of course, broadened his appeal, broadened his party's appeal, yeah? And... Um, and you know he, he 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 could be a man of charm, great charm, because he was a not a bad-looking fellow, was he? <laughs> and he had um, he he had two uh, attractive dimples, which which brought uh, masses of um, the female gender to the party and endeared him. Just saying these things, just shifting a little bit, a little perhaps a little waywardly. To the man himself, but mm. as prime minister, yes, there was a a certain um, ease of articulation of his ideas, so that the man in the street had a better grasp of what the, where the country was headed, and so on. His contribution is is, 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 is is something that you cannot take in a vacuum, and that charm um, also um, works for you in, 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 in having that loyal base in addition to uh, you yeah. know, um, your vision itself. I, I do want to go into one area, and I don't want to go nakedly into it. I just want to go into, because it is part of the man also, after you've been decimated in the election, and, and, and we are talking about, what is it, 1986, and he had to take this party and get the shift back floating with an energy to move forward and eventually win, win the election to, re, to, to have him placed as, um, as Prime Minister. That was no easy feat after 1986. Are you talking about after the Nar years? Yes, that's right. Well, the, the hardest part of that was not, um, not a lack of knowledge of how to govern because the PLM had had far more years than the Nar. Right? Yes, indeed. And in any case, he was coming in after the, the now crashed based on the, the coup, right? And of course, uh, upheavals within the NAR with the uh, UNC um, leaving, yes? Because they didn't think that um, their part of the bargain was being kept, yes. It was, well, it was as satisfactory as they had hoped. Mm-hmm. It probably was being kept, but it wasn't as satisfactory because politics has a way of making you shift your goals as you go along. And Robinson didn't have as many clothes as he probably thought he did. He, he was sustained politically by two seats, you know, don't forget that. Uh, two seats, a two Tobago seats, but he had a massive public appeal out there which whittled down under the pressure of UNC uh, aspirations, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Of course, we are going in, into a different direction. But the point I wanted to make was that um, he didn't have as difficult a task to do having regard to the PNM history of governance, right? Now disarray. And um, his greatest problems lay in, in, in how to let the PNM constituency uh, feel energized enough to take government and so on. So but he, but he, he had not lost, lo- permanently lost the kind of support PM had always enjoyed. So that I don't know that that was as great. It was a rebuilding, of course. You had to find people um, that who might have disappeared after the route by the NAR. It was a 33 route, do you remember? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and who perhaps had gone on the ground would become disenchanted and migrated. You had that sort of thing happening, right? In respecting what you said, that, but that is one of the reasons I thought it was so difficult, because after you hold the reins of power for that long yes. a period and then you lose it, there is a lot of fracture, a lot of finger pointing. And, yes. you know, it takes a certain uh, yeah. um, uh, a, a caliber of person to get in there and bring the forces back together and then bring back that, uh, that belief mm. that, in fact, we can get back there and take this ship and take it back to, 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 to what our original moorings were. Yes, but, you know, uh, Basio Pandey gave us a a metaphor that relates to what you have just mentioned, and that is uh, the support has parked. Pandey was saying, you know, uh, when the UNC was going through a very difficult time, it's not that my support has gone away, it's just that they have parked up. <laughs> um, the, the PNM has had a lot of parking of support over the years. And in respect of the NAR disarray, either you stayed on a fence, 
you became so disenchanted that you you wrote off politics, involvement in politics, or you go back to what you became accustomed to, had become accustomed to, and, uh, and, and what fundamental in your being you supported. It is why I'm saying is that nature does not tolerate a vacuum, if you understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when the disenchanted supporters would have looked at what had developed, they got new hope, and hope always springs anew in the human breast, except, of course, you become so old that when you become cynical, because you don't have many more years to go, you leave it up to the younger folks. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't have the population figures, you know, the demographics of the support, the kind of support PNM had, but I do know that their support had not materially been destroyed. Some of it, yes, but I think fundamentally there was a basis to start from. Manning had to handle that in terms of his selection, and that now has to do with his democracy. How do I select people to be with me in my, in my cabinet? Um, when, when the new elections um, were being prepared for, uh, how do you went about picking your candidates and so on? And I already referred to the fact that, um, although I don't have the details right now, that if we were to go back to his cabinet, we would find, I think, quite able people. Yes, a lot of fresh minds coming in fresh also minds. with that, that desire that desire to serve. And professionals, in fact, there was a big appeal for them as well. Indeed. Uh, Dr. James, I, I have to look at the, at the clock there, but I do want to ask you this before be, be, before we leave. Uh, if you had to uh, synopsisize the legacy of the former prime minister, do that for me, please. Sorry, you say that again. If Sorry. you had to give me uh, truncated um, the, uh, the legacy of Patrick Manning. <laughs> Oh, you mean in a nutshell? In a nutshell, yes. I think he's one of the best prime ministers we had. Uh, I, I think because he recognized his um, starting limitations, uh, he, he relied on uh, a kind of a democracy that involves skilled people to assist him to develop country. I think he was genuine in his desire. He had certain messianic tendencies. I think he gave off the vibe that he had been specially chosen by God uh, to rule the country, right? And I think that was a big weakness. It allowed him to call elections prematurely, which he lost, you know, thinking, of course, that the divine hand would intervene and keep him in power. We all know where that went. Uh, um, I, I, I heard Freddie Ferreira, Ferreira saying that that is one of the downsides of being in power for a very long time. That, well, I suppose, too. <laughs> yeah, I think Ferdy. <laughs> a man of wisdom, you know, Ferdy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yes, um, that may be so, although they are there, and that's why people have an imposition of time, a time limit. Don't stay there. But I, apart from this um, hybra, arrogant messianism, if you wish, um, um, I think the evidence suggests that um, uh, he really worked in the interest of, of the country. Um, as I said before, something nobody else, I think, has mentioned. He diversified the energy sector, right, in the way that I suggested. Uh, Nobody else seems to have remembered that. Um, But he, just like the others before him, uh, prime ministers, that is, uh, was not able to manage the the balance of payments uh, problems that Trinidad and Tobago continue to suffer from. Dr. James, thank you so much. By the way, just to just to be be, be clear, um, uh, Senator Conrad Enel, who was with us before, also uh, was in concert with you on the issue of how important this was, his contribution to diversifying and to modernizing and having a plan for the energy sector. But I thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning, sir, as always. Okay, my pleasure.